What's up everybody? It's your girl Megan, show fitness instructor. And today I'm gonna to take you guys through what a typical eating day looks like for me. But before I do that, if this is your first time tuning in, I am our show fitness instructor for here in La Jolla, California, as well as our online course that can get anyone to pass the NASM CPT within 30 days. With our study guide and weekly Zoom calls that I instruct every Tuesday at 5 p.m. PST, we've helped over 2,000 people pass this thing. Now we also have a new tier, money back guarantee. So if you're really trying to pass this thing, hit me up and I'll make sure you do that. Now today I'm going over what a typical average day would look like for me eating throughout the week. Just so you guys know, I do not normally track uh, what I eat. I'm more focused on what I'm doing during my workouts. That's something I'll talk about and address later. But for the purpose of this video, for a week, I tracked how much I was eating, what exactly, I didn't really change any factors. And during the week, this is typically what I would consume. So 2,500 calories a day might seem like a lot to you guys, especially because, you know, people consider me short, 5'5", five, five, I would say it's average, uh, 140 pounds. Uh, so it might seem like a lot for you guys. But like I said uh, later, which I'll address, is how much I'm working out. So for breakfast, typically I like to have eggs and toast. I love toast. So I love eating that and eggs are really great source of protein, 430 calories, 35 grams of protein. Lunch, uh, typically when I'm coming here to class, I'll prepare some stuff. So overnight oats is really easy. You do that, put it in the fridge, simple, protein pack once again, do many flavors, it's great. Uh, so 660 calories, looking at 62 grams of protein. Then dinner, chicken and broccoli. I do love chicken, but this isn't your typical chicken and broccoli that everyone goes on their diet, all right? Uh, it's not plain, I spice it up, hot sauce, spices. I like flavors, okay? So none of this that I eat is boring. I enjoy food, but I also like eating healthy sometimes, all right? Uh, so when you look at that, you're looking at 573 calories, about 56 grams of protein, and then snacks. I'm a big time snacker. I will snack throughout the day. Um, snack when I'm bored, like that's just what I, that's what I do. Uh, so no particular order in how I'm eating it, but protein bars, I enjoy them. It's super easy, fast, so I'll have them in the bag, have, put them in the fridge there. Uh, so looking at around that day, 340 calories for 30, 36 grams of protein. Uh, chocolate granola, I do have a sweet tooth. Like I said, I enjoy carbs, toast, bread, blue, like everything I enjoy, so I'm gonna eat it. Uh, chocolate and granola, we're looking at 450 calories, 10 grams of protein. Uh, so we're looking at a total for that day that I consume 2,453 calories as well as 199 grams of protein. So for me specifically, uh, one of my things that I really look at is protein intake. I like to have a lot of protein to make sure that during my workouts I'm recovering well, my muscles are getting prepared, and also protein is going to be more satisfying than other foods. But like I said, once again, I also enjoy carbs, so I'm not eliminating anything. Uh, people I know, it's 2022, we have a lot of goals, we want to lose weight, gain weight, all that stuff, so we're thinking, what's the next new diet that we can do? But the diet's going to be the best that works for you, so don't just do something that's going to last for two weeks and then all of a sudden you're back on track, it's a yo-yo diet, you lost 20 pounds, but then you come back the next month and you've gained 30, you're heavier than you were before. So this is trying to help you guys rearrange your mindset and Focus the emphasis on your workouts, and then also try to incorporate some nutrition. So during our course here at Show Up Fitness, in person and online, we do go over the body mass equation, which you'll see here. It has a lot of information because it's not just food, it's not just calories in, calories out, which you guys know, caloric deficit, caloric surplus. Um, there's a lot of other factors that take into account when it comes to weight loss and weight gain. So a couple of these things, um, which you can take the course and learn more or also do another YouTube later. Uh, but some things I'll highlight is gonna be hydration. Do my wake up and chug videos all the time. Make sure you get your water in throughout the day. Sleep, sleep is very important. Uh, something that I lacked when I was actually in college and younger, but you'll see it's very important when you're trying to repair those muscles and function properly and get good workouts in the next day. And there's a lot more other ones, so genetics, your mindset, stress, uh, hormones, environmental factors, all this stuff, like I said, I'll break it down another time. But this is what I use to calculate how many calories I should be consuming when I'm trying to work out. So 140 pounds, 
I don't usually weigh myself, but for the purpose of this video, once again, for a week, I did it. So consistently, I'll range from like 138, 142. I'd say 140 is like my happy medium, uh, but that's how much it is. So then at AF, activity factor, how many times am I working out throughout the week, but also intensity wise. So I work out, or at least try to work out consistently and did for this week, uh, five to six days. Uh, so we're looking at 2,173.5 calories that I should be consuming during those workout days if I'm trying to maintain my weight. Now, some days I did do double days. Like I said, I enjoy working out. Uh, so on those days I'm doing double days, we're looking at 2,520 calories uh, per day. So the whole idea of this is nutrition-wise, you can see how much fuel you need. The, the whole point of food is it's fuel for your body to get those workouts in. For many of us, we overestimate how hard we work out and we underestimate how much we're consuming. So we're gonna go in the gym, we're gonna go on the treadmill or Stairmaster, 30 minutes. Maybe we do 15 minutes of some bicep curls, maybe triceps, and then finish with some abs. We think we crushed it and then we're gonna go pig out when we go home. When we're talking about workouts, like where I'm talking about serious workouts. So if you've never had a trainer before and you don't know, never been on a team, if you're just judging by yourself, and most of the time you're overestimating, overestimating how hard you're working out. Underestimating how many calories, so like I said, I don't usually track, but during our course we do um, advise you to track at least once uh, for one week or whatever, which I did, and it's very eye-opening. So there's some foods that you think like, oh, it's only a couple calories. A handful of nuts, almonds, could be 300, 400, 500 plus calories. And a little handful and you're thinking oh it's just like a little snack maybe a hundred that adds up over time so all these other things which I didn't talk about the TDEE -E, so total day, daily energy expenditure uh, basal metabolic rate activity factor mentioned meat non-exercise activity thermogenesis what does that mean basically what are you doing outside of your workouts that helps to burn fuel so I like to constantly walk around, move, fidget, all that stuff. So that's going to help um, for my total amount that I can expend through the day. And then lastly, thermal effect of food. Obviously, food is important. Like we want to have nutritious foods. So grains, vegetables, all that stuff. But we're looking at overall uh, consumption. If your goal is to lose, lose weight, obviously you want to get a caloric deficit. But thermal effect of food will play it definitely a part of that. So like I said, protein fiber is gonna be way more satiating uh, than uh, other foods. So the main thing that I wanted to talk about to wrap it all up is that this is a typical day throughout the week that I'll eat. Sometimes it's 2,500 calories, sometimes it's way more, sometimes it's a little less. It depends on how hard I'm working out. But the key thing that I like to um, point out is consistency and enjoyment. So consistently throughout the week when I'm training, when I'm working out, when I'm here in the gym, my meals typically look like this. During the weekends, however, um, I will indulge. I'll drink, I'll eat a lot. I like to enjoy my life, but I don't just go crazy and not work out. I take that into account, and before I do that, I'll get in a, a hard workout. Maybe I'll do two workouts a day. I stress my workouts because that's more important to me than how much, what exactly I'm eating. Instead of stressing about looking at the wrappers of how much everything is, how many chin-ups was I able to do, do today? Was I able to do it weighted? How much can I bench? How much can I squat? The work that I put in is gonna be way more important, uh, personally, than the nutrition. Nutrition is gonna help when it comes to other parts, but if your workouts aren't up to par, it's not gonna do much. So the big thing is we have choices and sacrifices. So during the week, I make the choice and I sacrifice not having little, little things or not drinking or whatever, uh, because at the weekend, that's like my fun time. But I also know I'm not going to completely eliminate any one product for myself, uh, because I know with my workouts that I can make up for anything that I'm slacking. Uh, so once again, this is an overview of everything for a typical day during the week. But like I said, there's some days that I will go over 200 2,500 calories, which seems like a, a lot, it probably is, uh, but there's other days that I'll go under 1,800 or stay at 1,800. But I'm not tracking it. More importantly, I'm looking at my workouts. 
So if you're watching this video and you're interested more in nutrition, uh, we do have a course online and in person that will go over more into detail about what these uh, letters and this equation means. And just for you guys to know, uh, you do not need a certificate to be considered a nutritionist. Uh, so don't go for the NASM extra package deal. Just get the regular NASM CPT if you're trying to be a trainer in a corporate gym. But you just need a basic understanding. And most importantly, when we're looking at calories, know that if you're a registered dietitian, uh, you're the only person that could, could let your client know to go under 1,200 calories. If you're not a registered dietitian, you do not you're not legally qualified uh, to do that. They have a better scope of practice. We cannot do that, but we can give our clients basic advisements, uh, drink more water, protein, macros, stuff like that. Uh, so that's important to know. And like I said, if you are trying to pass that NASM CPT, are you gonna see a lot on nutrition? No, a little bit of stuff, but not a lot. So this is a little insight of what I eat, what I typically do. Um, but if you're interested in learning more about nutrition, how to become a great personal trainer, all that stuff, like I said, and I mentioned, I am a instructor here in San Diego, but we also have a location in uh, Los Angeles, so the LA, so West Hollywood and Santa Monica, and we also have Austin. We do have seminars, which will be announced shortly, so be, stay tuned for those. And then of course we have our online internship. So if you can't physically make it in person, uh, you can also go online. We reach people all over the world, different countries now. So don't feel like you have to make it in person yet to still learn. So before I head up, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram at activeact7ve, as well as show fitness and show fitness internship. We also have our website at www.showfitness.com. And of course, all you guys got to do is show up. It's your girl, Megan, out of here.